Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Buck Stops Here. I'm Catherine Murray. Well, we certainly have focused so much on interest rates and inflation, the Bank of Canada and the U.S. Federal Reserve. But it's also, of course, important to keep your eyes on what the government's doing as it relates to your taxes. So in other words, in addition to the inflation effects that you're feeling, uh, whether it's cost of food or a, at the gas pump, uh, you're also seeing your taxes increase. And specifically, one that's coming to a theater near you uh, is the alcohol tax. I, I want to bring in a guest who I've talked to for a number of years now, Scott Hennig. He is the president and CEO of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, which is a nonprofit and nonpartisan organization. Scott, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. And, and a lot of important topics that I want to bring up today and, and get your opinion on so people really understand what's, what's going on. Yeah, no, happy to be here. Thanks, Catherine. And, and you've really uh, nailed it here with the, the alcohol tax, which uh, <laughs> we're going to be seeing it going up here April 1st unless the government steps in and stops it. And so, first of all, a couple of things. I just want people to understand your organization. Then we're going to get into that tax for a second. Mm -hmm. But, but what, what are, what's your mandate? Yeah, we're a nonprofit organization dedicated to lower taxes, less government waste, more government accountability. Uh, we're fully funded by individual Canadians who cut checks to us every year. In fact, uh, 25,000 uh, individual Canadians last year sent a uh, donation and keep the lights on uh, at the organization and let us go out there and, and fight on their behalf for, uh, for uh, sanity at, uh, at, our, at our public sector uh, levels. Yeah, which is important. It's really important to have the accountability. I mean, it certainly makes sense for some taxes maybe to increase depending on what the needs are, that is for sure. But and I think a lot of people actually do know about this alcohol tax. But let, let's talk a little bit about it, because um, it, it's not as though this is new. I mean, the taxes have been increasing easily since 2017. So take us back in terms of what the alcohol tax actually is right now. So people know they're already paying a lot. Yeah, sure. So if we just talk about just the, the base level alcohol taxes across the, the country, uh, on beer, it's about 50%. So about half of what you're paying on, on every can of beer or bottle of beer you're buying is going to governments of various, uh, either the provincial or the federal government. Uh, on wine, it's closer to uh, two thirds of the price is tax. And then on spirits, it's uh, over 75% is, is tax right now. So the majority of the money that you're paying if you buy a a bottle of, of good Canadian whiskey is going to the government in, in some level. And it is it until 2017, governments had to go in. If they wanted to raise that tax, they had to go into parliament, they had to pass a budget, they had to have a, a vote and be transparent about what they wanted to do. Uh, starting in 2017, the government put in what we refer to as the escalator tax. So it, it increases automatically uh, the taxes on all alcohol on April 1st every year based on the inflation rate. And as you referenced here, yeah. uh, that has been a, a pretty significant hit this year. And, and because of that, we're going to see uh, a 6.3% increase on all liquor taxes come April 1st, based on the uh, based on the inflation rate for this past year. Hmm. Um, which is quite astonishing, just given the fact that, you know, we're seeing prices rise in basically every other area uh, of our lives, whether it's rent, homes, well, maybe that's changing a little bit now, but certainly gas and, and food costs. And it's interesting because you're actually seeing lower taxes in, in other governments around the world, recognizing whether it's gas or, or food or, or liquor, recognizing that it's, it's tough times for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, particularly on the, uh, on the energy side, on the, the gas and, and uh, heating side, we've seen uh, more than a dozen countries around the world cut their taxes. Even here in Canada, we saw the Alberta government, so the Ontario government, uh, Newfoundland, uh, just to name a few, cutting, uh, cutting taxes on, on gas because we're seeing extraordinary prices and, and uh, you know, governments don't need to be collecting extra, uh, extra taxes on the backs of Canadians who are struggling. I mean, it, food prices is a really good example, whether it's milk or meat or eggs here most recently, um, you know, these mm. are staples that people need. And energy in this country is also something that's not really a luxury good. You know, we don't hear about people taking uh, Sunday drives anymore and just driving around the country, uh, having a good time on a Sunday, burning up a bunch of gas. Gas is a necessity. We live in the second largest landmass country in the world, and it's one of the coldest, as we all know. Mm. And uh, heating and, and driving is not really a, a luxury item for most Canadians. And that's why, you know, some governments have done the right thing and, and cut the taxes. Other ones, uh, our federal government uh, looking to also increase our carbon tax on April 1st, as well as looking to bring in a yeah. second tax on gas um, later this year with their with their clean fuel standards. So uh, they're doing the opposite of what we're seeing in a lot of countries and a lot of provinces. 
A absolutely. And, um, you know, it impacts everybody. And it also really impacts a lot of the people who live in more rural communities. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. So, Scott, I, I want to just pick it up a little bit more as well in terms of um, the carbon tax and the gas tax. Let, let's just lay out what Canadians are already dealing with um, and what we can expect to come. Um, because I, I think that in the media, you, you know, you hear about these things and people are busy with their busy lives and you forget. But there's a, a real accumulation going on here that are added an extra cost for for so many individuals, for everybody. Yeah, I mean, we have with with gases alone, you have not only do you have a, a federal excise tax, which is uh, I think right now it's 11 cents a liter. You have a provincial excise taxes in every province, with the exception right now of Alberta, who is a, they've eliminated their provincial excise tax. Um, you have a GST that is calculated or HST that is calculated after you had those other taxes. You have a carbon tax. And then in some places you're going to have um, local municipal taxes. So both uh, both around Montreal and around uh, the lower man mainland of Vancouver, they have transit taxes on their gas. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're well over half the price of gas, uh, depending on where we're at with the price. I mean, sometimes when they get up to uh, two bucks a liter in the lower mainland, we're, we're just, just under 50% of the price uh, is, is taxed. But uh, when it drops back down to a dollar twenty dollar thirty in, in most places, in the country, we're looking at over uh, half or around a little over half of the price is already taxed. Uh, on top of that, the government raises the carbon tax every year on April 1st, and they're going to continue to do that up to 2030 and maybe beyond. And then the clean fuel standard, which I mentioned earlier, uh, they're bringing that in place. So that that's already in place in British Columbia. It uh, it will add an extra, I believe it's seven or eight, seven or eight cents a liter. Uh, these clean fuel standards that the government's bringing in um, later this year. We think it's coming in uh, next, the fall of 2023 is when it was slated to come in. Um, these all are just tacking on more and more. And, and those things start to then trickle out to other things, right? So if you increase the price of gas and diesel, trucking and, you know, trucking goods into right. the grocery stores goes up, uh, you know, transporting people around. It's not just you driving your kids to soccer and hockey practice. It's everything yeah. goes up because it gets baked into uh, the cost of everything that we buy. You know, it, it's an absolute pile on effect. And at the end of the day, the companies, you know, especially publicly traded companies, they need to, you know, satisfy their shareholders. That's just kind of the way the game works these days. Um, and they're going to, you know, pass on those prices. And once you increase prices, you rarely see them decrease. And, and really what that does, in my opinion, you know, not even longer term, but kind of right now, uh, is it, it continues to create this this divide and, and a loss of a middle class, which is so key and critical um, to a great functioning country, really. And uh, and it doesn't seem to be stopping or, or recognition that w maybe this is just too much for people. And, and but you are seeing, again, other countries pull that back. I mean, I thought Australia was quite interesting in terms of their um, carbon tax, pulling that back. Right. Yeah, they eliminated their carbon tax uh, a few years ago. Uh, in fact, we, we brought over a guy from Australia a few years ago to tour around and, and talk about what happened there and, and why they brought it back. But I mean, they, you know, they're much like Canada, right? They're, they're a fairly large landmass. You, you have to, uh, you have to drive around that, uh, that country to get from place to place. Um, but they also looked at it and said, we're, we're really not the issue. We're not, whether we have any emissions going uh, out or, 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 you know, at all, um, that's not going to make the difference in terms of, of world uh, world uh, climate change. I mean, the, the real decision of whether or not we're going to see uh, a human impact of climate change is happening in China, happening in India. And what happens there is really the deciding factor. I mean, especially if you look at Canada, we're 1.6% of world emissions. If we cut off every carbon emission that we had today, um, we would make no difference when it comes to uh, when it comes to world emissions, really. Um, now, that's and, and, and not that's to say that we shouldn't. Yeah. Sorry, Ed. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's not to say we shouldn't do our part, but but to to such a degree where individuals are so impacted uh, in terms of their cost of living when Canada is one percent. People really need to realize this. Mm -hmm. Canada is not the the polluter here. Um, it, you know, the reality is it's, it's the larger countries that aren't nearly as strict like China and like India. They've been very clear about this. 
Yeah, I mean, it, and it's not like we shouldn't be trying to find new technologies, but I mean, the private sector has been very good at that uh, for years. I mean, just by the price of gasoline alone and the cost of extracting oil, companies, uh, car companies have become more efficient, more fuel efficient, uh, because they know the customers are demanding that, not because governments are pushing them or saying you have to, uh, you have to do this to meet certain emission targets. They're doing it because customers want it. And uh, mm -hmm. I think we can continue to, you know, utilize the technology, share that technology that we're developing and finding other technology. But at the end of the day, what we do doesn't amount to a hill of beans uh, compared to the real big countries like like China, China and India. That's where the decision gets made. And you really it's hard to fault them for wanting the same things that we want. So it's uh, this is a, a big challenge. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Uh, Scott, I just kind of want to wrap it up on, on the gas tax side. So so you mean that just so we're really clear here, uh, when you go to the gas station, you're basically paying on average 50 percent of what you're paying is tax. Is that about right? Yeah, it, it depends on what province you're in. If you're in Alberta, it's a little bit less. If you're in B.C., it's a whole lot more. Uh, same with around Montreal. It's a whole lot more. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's about half of it and going up. April 1st, we're going to see the carbon tax go up and you're going to see that uh, on every pump across the country. It's going to jump that price by a few cents. Uh, and that starts to add up because we're now in, yeah. I don't know what year we are, year seven of, uh, of increasing carbon taxes every year. And we're only mm -hmm. halfway there to 2030. So it's uh, more to come in, in, in that regard. And the reason why I bring this up, and you know, when you think about the alcohol tax, so just say on average, 50% of what you pay at the LCBO or wherever um, is tax, and then 50% of your gas is tax. The reason why I want to bring this up is because a lot of people, you know, if they go to the states and say, "Oh, everything's so much cheaper here," well, it is, um, but I think that you kind of forget that it's not just your currency effect. I think that some people think, you know, because we're importing a lot of these goods with a cheaper dollar, cheaper Canadian dollar, you know, you can kind of just wash it away in your head and think that it's part, you know, a large part of currency effect that gets passed on to us. But it's important to know, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's you know, you're kind of paying 50% of the price is tax. Yeah, I mean, the, the big difference between uh, prices in Canada and the U.S., once you factor in the the, uh, the exchange rate, is tax. I mean, there, the states, uh, a lot of the states have lower taxes than us, uh, and that's the difference. That's why you see uh, uh, lineups at the border when, uh, when in, around uh, uh, lower mainland of British Columbia and even in places in Ontario to go down and buy gasoline in the U.S. It's cheaper there, and they're willing to spend that extra hour or two to go down there, get your gas, get your groceries. And there was one point... Uh, down in uh, down in Washington State, where they were trying to ban Canadians from coming down there at the Costco's because there were so many Canadians that the the local uh, Washington residents couldn't get to their uh, couldn't get the gas, couldn't get to, to their shopping they wanted to get done because mm. there were so many Canadians mm -hmm. down there. And people are going to move with yeah. their feet, yeah. and and they they're, they're going to do that stuff if they have the opportunity. Yeah, you, you have to move. You have to move and, and try to you know make ends meet where you can, but. But, mm -hmm. but the reality is these are the policies that are going on in, in Canada right now. Um, another item I want to bring up um, as it relates to taxpayers' dollars, because that's what we're talking about, your hard-earned dollars, um, it is one that has to do with the CRA. And this was in the news as well, the CRA wanting a, uh, a pretty significant wage increase. Yeah, the, the, the union representing the tax collectors are looking for a, a 30% raise. Uh, that's over three years, so more than 10% a year when you, when you compound it all up. Um, and that one, um, that they're, they represent the largest, um, I guess, government, non sort of uh, direct government PSAC union body. Uh, the CRA is, is the largest arm of government, believe it or not. A lot of people think that it would be a different department, but actually the tax collectors have the most number of employees of all the different government departments. Um, the other big union that's trying to negotiate right now is, as well as the uh, is PSAC, the Public Service Alliance. Uh, they represent about a third of all the government employees, or about a, almost 120,000 government employees. Uh, they're they're actually looking for up to 47 percent uh, total wage uh, hike over over the three years. Um, so it's a massive, massive ask from both those unions, uh, and I think they're they're really out of touch when it comes to uh, what real Canadians are experiencing right now with with asks that that large. And so, a couple questions. What, what's um, what's the justification for wanting such a significant increase? Let's start with the CRA. 
<laughs> well, I think they're they're both uh, they're both under the same uh, uh, the same same argument is that inflation is high and uh, we deserve uh, wage hikes. I mean, I, I have a tough time saying that there is any justification for asking for something that crazy. Um, but from what we've heard from the union uh, bosses, they're saying that, uh, you know, it's uh, it's high time with this inflation that we get uh, large raises. Um, my, my response to that is, uh, if, if in three weeks, StatsCan comes out and says uh, inflation's down to 3%, are you going to drop your wage uh, requests? I doubt it. I think they're still right. digging in their feet here and, and trying to get the government to pony up. How, how easy is it for them to get this through? Who's well, I mean... Well, that's a good question. So far, the politicians haven't said anything on this. We haven't heard a peep from any politician pushing back on on these union demands. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm very concerned that uh, we may uh, not see the government put up much of a fight. Beyond that, uh, the government doesn't seem to be that concerned with uh, going into deficits. I mean, we, we saw the largest deficits we've ever seen in this country's history over the past few years here, and, and the government hasn't, hasn't uh, bad an eye on it, even when they even mm -hmm. now we're seeing the inflation and we're seeing uh, some of the uh, the impacts of it, they seem to still be OK with the decision they made. So I'm quite concerned the government isn't going to push back hard enough. And, and I think it's up to taxpayers to push back instead. Hmm. Interesting. And and we do see some politicians, again, in other countries that are taking a bit of a pay decrease, given what's going on. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Scott, it, it was interesting just in doing some reading and, and prepping for this um, to, to learn, as I mentioned in the past segment, that there are politicians, you know, in other countries that are, are perhaps, um, you know, lowering their salaries. I mean, we're talking about people asking for significant raises. Um, what's the average that an MP makes now? Yeah, I believe it's uh, around one hundred and eighty thousand um, dollars, and uh, they've also received uh, two pay hikes here during the pandemic. So on again on April first, uh, they've built in their own pay escalator. Um, so we saw hmm. two two times, and they're going to get another one here coming up uh, on April first, unless something against unless something changes. Uh, they're going to get their third pay hike here. Uh, while we've seen on the other side, we've seen pay cuts, we've seen job losses in the private sector. Um, you know, again, uh, not really in touch with what's happening in, in the rest of the world. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, it's interesting when you talk about escalators, like pay escalators or, you know, um, the alcohol tax, which was an escalator effect. These are items that come out in a budget. And, you know, having covered the budget for over a decade now, it's, you know, people are always like, uh, you know, is it really that important? It is important. <laughs> I want people to realize that you, we got to pay attention um, because these it, these aspects end up impacting all of us. Um, that is for sure. Uh, I want to just kind of talk a little bit, Scott, about, um, you know, what people can do. I mean, well, before I get to that, is it a little bit of a depressing conversation what we're having a little bit, I think, you know, just knowing how difficult yeah. things are these days. But let me add one more that I that I understand um, is uh, is a Toronto property tax. Oh, uh, yes. Increase. Yeah. Property taxes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing uh, we're seeing um, uh, property taxes go up in, in a lot of different places right now. Toronto's looking at a fairly sizable one, um, you know, and, and back, to, you know, it's funny back to the kind of the, the wage argument and the wage settlement stuff. Uh, often a lot of these decisions aren't made at budget time. Like it's not whether or not you're going to buy the police an extra couple of cars or not. That's going to decide whether or not your property taxes are going up by, you know, six percent or three percent. Often those decisions are made at the at the bargaining table. So when they decide to sign a, a three year agreement where uh, they give, you know, the because the biggest chunk mm. of government expenditures, whether it's federal, provincial, municipal, the biggest chunk of government expenditures is on wages. And when they increase the number of employees, like we've seen at the federal government level, uh, we've seen uh, 70 some thousand, 77,000 employees added since 2015 to the federal public service. Uh, we've seen uh, 35,000 added just during the pandemic alone. A lot of the job recovery numbers came directly from governments, uh, federal government hiring additional people. But when you make those kinds yeah. of decisions, whether it's a city hall or at, uh, at the federal level, that's what decides what we're gonna see with our taxes. And, and uh, when it comes to Toronto, um, there's no question that uh, you know wage wage agreements and wage negotiations made over the past couple of years 
uh, plus, you know, some some questionable decisions uh, at City Hall are leading to uh, these higher than uh, than expected property taxes. And the real tough thing about property taxes is that it doesn't have anything to do with your ability to pay. So if you've lost your job, mm. uh, if you're if you're on un unemployment right now, yet you you know live in a house that uh, property taxes and property values went up in with through no fault of your own all of a sudden your taxes are going up and your only option uh, is to sell that house and and try to try to use that money to help uh, pay your you know pay your grocery bills or pay your property tax bill plus we yeah. have seniors some, some seniors who are living in parts of Toronto and other cities who have been living there for 50 years and their property just happened to go up in in price yet they haven't seen those kinds of increases in their in their pensions or in their any of their ability right. to pay so property taxes are a really tough way to hit a lot of families who who really may not be may not have the ability to afford to afford them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and most people are on fixed incomes. I mean, you know, at, at best, right? A lot of people don't get bonuses or big, bo let alone big bonuses. And to your point on the mm -hmm. seniors, I mean, they've been living in a low interest rate environment for for you know over ten years. It's been so difficult. So to have more cash flow needs. With property taxes, which I understand are to maybe raise 25% by 2025. Is that about right? Yeah, we've seen some really high numbers popping up in Toronto. Uh, some very scary numbers, especially when you see, I mean, it's already, I think the, what the Royal Bank came out a couple of weeks ago saying that you had to have a, an income of $240,000 to get a mortgage for a house in Toronto now. I mean, it's uh, yeah. uh, Toronto is really, they've got a lot of issues. Property taxes are part of it. Uh, but we're also now, I mean, the, the affordability crisis is is really hitting Toronto and, and uh, the surrounding yeah. area. Um, Scott, I don't know how people are going to be able to stay there. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. I, Scott, on that note, you've got about five seconds. How can people get involved or what can they do? Go to taxpayer.com. Yeah, sign our petitions, uh, start getting our emails. We'll let you know when it's time to push back on politicians and we'll give you the all the tools you need to push back. And, and that's what's going to stop uh, all of these tax hikes is people pushing back. We'll leave it there. Great to see you. Thanks so much.